Who remembers Craig David? I tell you who doesn't. Anyone under the age of about 35. And uh, for Craig David and his massive ego, that's a massive problem. Well, you see, there are two kinds of artiste. That's right. Only two kinds. Only two kinds of artists. What an absolutely absurd false dichotomy. Shut up with your nuance. Shove it. There are two kinds of artists, okay? On the one hand, there are artists for whom what they produce, the art that they make, whether that be music or films or paintings or whatever, for them, that is the most important aspect of everything they do. The product, the art, does what they make, what they produce, make them happy and proud. And secondary to that is their reaction, their feelings about any praise or criticism that they receive. So this is an important distinction to make because I think on the one hand we have these artists for whom the art is the most important thing and then the adulation and the appreciation that they might get as a result of producing what they're producing is secondary. Which is not to say that they don't like that people appreciate their art. I think almost all artists do what they do in part because they want it to be seen and appreciated, absolutely. But on the one hand, we have this group of artists for whom that feeling, the appreciation, people's response to what they're doing is secondary. And on the other hand, we have Madonna. This video is about Craig David, so let's get back on topic. So I came across an interview with Craig David on the BBC the other day where he was talking about how he suffered bullying in the early 2000s at the hands of comedian Lee Francis. So let's just take a look at a couple of clips from that interview uh, so that you get an idea of what he's saying and then I'm going to proceed to gaslight the shit out of him. Because Craig David is talking out of his ass. Do you know what, I mean... <laughs> I, I, and I talk about this like in much more expansive than I can do today in the book, but it was all about early days behind the scenes of some of those songs that people we've just seen then and how we may have been feeling behind the scenes, that there is the human being and then there was the, the portraying the life is great as a musician. And I felt that I really needed to unravel that and to say that I have experienced depression, I experienced being bullied at school being bullied and ridiculed on, on, on nationally on TV. Now, for those of you who aren't sure what Craig David is talking about, he's referring to Channel 4 show Bo Selector. Bollocks. Yeah! He's scared for, scares crows, not peregrine falcons. So even if you've never seen Bo Selector before, that two-second clip basically gives you the gist of what it was. Essentially, the main joke of the show was the non-secretors. Lee Francis would dress up in these ridiculous caricature rubber face masks and imitate some of the most famous people in the UK at the time. But he wasn't really imitating them, as you just saw with that clip there. Ooh, I'm proper boasting for Bogatelli. Craig David was like this cool R&B artist from Southampton, and he imitated him with a ridiculous Yorkshire accent wearing a plastic kestrel on his arm, like Kez. And literally all of the characters in the show had the same voice. Or if not exactly the same voice, then another completely bizarre voice and an accent that didn't correspond to the real person at all. The jokes were meaningless. I can understand Craig David not finding it funny, finding it even irritating, but to say it was bullying him when literally nothing about the character was personal, it was a non sequitur, it was the opposite of what he was. I'm just not buying it. It was hilarious because the impressions were just absolutely nothing like the people that they were supposed to be. Scary spies. <laughs> Bastards. And the reasons why I, I may have moved away to Miami and come back, but the healing I had to go through and telling it in stories form so people hopefully can just resonate with it. But it's not about the musician. You don't have to be someone who's in the public eye. You, everyone deals with depression at different severities. You see, he's plugging a book, so why not stir up a bit of controversy? Some of you are probably watching this thinking, who's this cynical bastard? You don't know what he went through. Well, first of all, less of the language, please. And second of all, I've got a memory. I remember watching Bow Selector. There is no way you can call that bullying. Oh, and third of all, the internet. You see, Craig David kind of let the cat out the bag a few years ago about this whole incident. But I'll save that for later in the video. It's going to blow your mind. I mean, if you ever cared initially about this story. It blew my mind. But you have to have felt it. And I felt that was really important for me to... You can only speak on bullying if you've really experienced it. Hey, Craig David! It's from a bar, isn't it, eh? Where's Kez? 
Let's get a picture of you. Oh, oh, there you go. Go. oh you mad! Get lost! You mad! Get lost! You can really only really speak on depression if you've actually experienced it, and it it really took me to a dark place that I never thought as such a positive person that I'd be speaking about that. But the most important thing is that I am talking about it, and I wanted to have a book that does touch on it because I feel like people will say, you know what? I know what he's going through. I don't know if he was bullied as a kid or whatever. I've got no reason to uh, doubt that. But uh, everything he's saying now, remember it, because what I'm going to show you is going to... Well, if you're still watching, it's going to blow your mind. You will not actually be able to believe what a narcissist this guy is. And I know I'm going through that, and this is how maybe I healed myself, and someone else can hopefully resonate with that and, and not have to go through some of the pitfalls that I went through too. How are you doing now? I'm so much better. And so much better in recognizing that mental health is something that always has to be managed and you can easily be triggered by things that usually are in your childhood and as an adult you're trying to unravel and deal with those and the more you push them under the carpet is the more they rear their head up in other ugly ways so it's just a constant maintaining maintaining of my mental health and talking about it the more people talk about it like when i saw leon speaking earlier i'm just like you're speaking your truth and you're making a difference by hearing and speaking about what means and matters to you. You're seen. And I think that's for me, as an artist, my responsibility now is to unravel the mystery around, oh, it's great, it's glitzy, it's post to post on Instagram and it's the likes. Now let's get underneath it. Let's have a real deep dive conversation rather than just ice skating through life. So, Is it? Is that your job as an artist to not show us the glitz and glamour, to unravel it, to get under it? I'd actually go for more ice skating. Let's ice skate through life, please. <laughs> you're an artist. You're a singer. Make our life a little bit better. Maybe we want to see a bit of glitz and glamour. Maybe that's what we enjoy. Helps us escape. What are you, a life coach now? <laughs> Wake up to transcend. You've all heard the word transcend. You know what it means? End the trance. Transcend. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been empowering and healing for me in a lot of space. Ice skating through life. That's a great <laughs> phrase, yeah. No, it isn't. But at times it's been nasty, hasn't it? You know, yeah. you talk about being bullied as a child, um, bullied on mm. national television. Um, how do you come through that? How do you, you know, just as you, you say, not as a, a musician, as a human being? Yeah. Ginger bastard. I hate it. I do. You ruined it for me! Where do you find the resilience to put yourself back together again? Where does he find the resilience to pull himself back together? He's a multi-millionaire R&B artist with legions of fans. They make him sound like a homeless war veteran hooked on opioids. And come and talk to us on the sofa, release new music, yeah. when people have been mean. Yeah, do you know what it is? Is that it's, as you said, about bringing fragmented parts of you back together. So my experience of, of bullying at school wasn't as bad as some other people who experienced the school. And I wrote a song called Johnny that even really goes into that on my Story Goes album. Um, but it's the me defense mechanisms that you create, like let's laugh it off, um, let's, or, or you become very introverted and you want to run away or you want to leave school. So I, I felt like there's the kid in me who's speaking to every young boy and young girl out there from bullying stage, but because it was impounded by becoming ridiculed on TV, which was just straight bullying. I don't know how well anyone who's got this far into the video knows Bo Selector, but I'm going to put a few more clips in so that you get the idea. All of the characters were ridiculous. Look at Michael Jackson. You don't think Bubbles was a monkey, did you? Sure, she eats my banana, but she don't have an inch of hair on her goddamn body. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> There's just no likeness at all to the characters he's imitating. He's not imitating the characters. It's non sequitur. It's ironic. It's stupid. It's not supposed to be attacking the people that he's making fun of because he's not really making fun of them. That's not what is supposed to be funny about the show. That for me, it was like, OK, I have to work through this and my leaving to go to Miami. And because of that, because of that show in particular, it, it, it made it, it gave a okay for people to feel that they could continue the bullying but without knowing and that normalized it and i felt like i needed to address that in the book to say no 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 because i'm talking on behalf of anyone who's being bullied right now um so to come back and sit here on the sofa and to talk about it openly and to hopefully have people say you know what i'm interested in the story talk about it because we all experience different forms of that and i think it needs to be something that we address as opposed to just trying to shy away from it because it led me into a spiral of depression and to a point where I was questioning 
okay, I've never experienced this before. I'm my home, where I love, you know? And Notice how he and other narcissists, I mean, I don't, I hope he doesn't think I'm bullying him because, uh, you know, he seems very thin skinned. But anyway, uh, notice how he and other, others like him, whether they are narcissists or not, uh, will do this all the time. They talk for ages, but they don't actually say anything at all. And how did that show itself? When you say you, it was a spiral, what, what happened? I mean, to, I think everyone's like saying, just say it. It's like, so when the Boy Selector show was out, that period of time was a hard processing for me because I didn't know why a song like Rewind, which was my, a, a cultural song that broke the ice for so many artists to come through. I am going to get to the most important part of the video soon, I promise. But this is the thing about it to me. Here he goes into details about how they took the mick out of a song he wrote. I think what he can't stand is being ridiculed, right? It's not that he's being bullied, because there's nothing in that Ball Selector character that he could say, yeah, they're, they're picking up on my personality and they're saying that I'm a bad person. Nobody looked at that caricature of Craig David and thought, oh God, that's like Craig David, what an idiot. No, they didn't. What Lee Francis was doing in Ball Selector was taking celebrity cultures and just uh, saying, oh, Fuck you all, you know? I'm just going to put a big stupid rubber face on and I'm going to laugh at you all because you're all ridiculous, right? That was it. That was the point of Ball Selector, you know? It wasn't to bully individuals. It was to laugh at celebrity culture. It was nothing more than that. And I don't even think it was that intellectual. <laughs> I don't think Ball Selector was particularly intellectual. It was just mad. It was ridiculous. It was post-ironic, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't bullying. But of course, Craig David never actually felt bullied. And I say that with 100% certainty, as I'm going to show you later in the video. There's evidence. He, over the years, has changed his narrative about this story on a number of occasions. And he's either called it bullying or not bullying or said he's angry or he's not angry about it whenever convenient. Whenever convenient for Craig David and his PR team. If he was ever offended by anything at all, it was the fact that someone dared to laugh at Craig David. He never felt bullied. Ridiculed, possibly. Craig David would never laugh at Craig David. So how dare anyone else laugh at Craig David? Was now being ridiculed. That was one thing that I, I kind of placed it as a music thing. But then actually what it was doing is slowly was just bullying, not only myself, but Mel B, it was bullying Trisha. Um, and I felt that there was no real accountability at that time. And I was young, you know, I was between a rock and a hard place. Do we lean in, defence me mechanism? Ah, oh, let's laugh it off. Come on, let's do a show together to try and shy away. Was that suggested? Yeah, we did. A sh we, yeah. We, there was a point at which it, um, Lee Fraser was on stage doing his whole act because we felt, mm, maybe lean in, that might make it go away. Didn't work. Or you're going to play the victim, go there. I'm sorry, what, Craig David? Play the victim, go there? You, you mean as a tactic to make him shut up so that you don't feel like you're being ridiculed? Don't worry, he said this very clearly a few years ago in an interview with the Sun, which I am going to get to. He didn't feel bullied. He wanted to stop someone making fun of him because he thought it was bad press. This man is obsessed with his image. And it's just having accountability. I have no grudge with Lee, genuinely. It's just, it's more the fact of you need to be accountable. And I just he, found... he's apologised. He, he put out an apology, he said I shouldn't have done it. And... Yeah, unfortunately, he did apologise. And uh, is that not good enough for Craig David? No, of course it's not good enough for Craig David. He's still got a few more minutes of the interview in which to do some more holier-than-thou moral grandstanding. Yeah, and, you know, I, I don't know if, how sincere. It just feels a bit of a coincidence that it happened to come at a time when George Floyd has been killed in, in broad daylight in America. Oh, yeah, I think you might be onto something there, Craig David. I reckon Lee Francis was probably sitting at home like most of us when he saw those images for the first time, those tragic images of uh, the death of George Floyd with those police officers kneeling on him. He's begging for help and, he, you know, he slipped out of consciousness and... We probably reflected for a couple of minutes and thought, oh my God, that's just like what happened to Craig David. That's what I put Craig David through. I need to tell the world. I just need the world to know how sorry I am for doing that to Craig David. To then have the Black Lives Move, uh, Movement, Lives Matter Movement, being at protests around the world to, to show this, and then it comes at a time as a reaction to, I need to then say my piece for something that really should never have gone there in terms of ever going to putting a rubber mask on that's black-facing, which it was. 
Now, I've got no way of proving this, but I would bet my last penny that Craig David and his PR team never thought that Ball Selector was racist at the time. They're saying it now, retrospectively, because it jazzes up their story a little bit. The only thing they were bothered about was their thin skin and the fact that their serious image that they had planned for uh, Craig David, you know, this R&B star, this cool R&B star, they didn't want that being ruined by some bloody idiot in a rubber mask. And it's just being accountable for that, and I think that... Ultimately, I never really spoke about that, and the coincidence of it just felt too timely. And I was, and it, it, I feel emotional about speaking about it because I just felt like I was talking on behalf of so many people who've been bullied and experienced that. But at the same time, this isn't my moment to be like, I'm going to double down on Lee Francis. It's not. It's just that let's be accountable for things that truly matter to people because I'm now representing that. So, yeah, it, I talk about it all in the book, What's Your Vibe? And it was, uh, it was very empowering for me to heal myself by talking about it like that, you know? Healed. That's that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. And the album out at the same time as well. Yeah, so we're celebrating music and we're talking our truth. And I feel like you can't do much more than that. So yeah, the new album is is the the, the feeling I got from Born to Do It, the first album. I've done it all over again in that and a new book, Watch Your Vibe. So Thanks so much for coming in and talking to us. My pleasure. Lovely to see you. And the new album is called 22 to reflect those 22 years of Craig's career. You a nice and tidy 10 minute plug there while dashing somebody else's reputation against the rocks. Lovely stuff, Craig David. Your book, your album, all going well. Lovely. Now let's head back to 2015. Craig David, I gave Bow Selector star Lee Francis a big hug and everything is cool. This was seven years ago, by the way. He was 21 with 13 million albums sold, 12 Brit nominations, two Grammy nods and three Ivor Novellos. Craig David was a young British superstar with the world at his feet. Then along came the cult show Bow Selector with comic Lee Francis and his infamous rubber masked impression of the R&B singer. Suddenly Craig's stock went from rising to laughing. Now that's a good one. Quality journalism from the mirror. But 13 years on, and after he once claimed the show hurt and humiliated him, the star has kissed and made up with his former nemesis, now better known as his TV alter ego, Keith Lemon. The moment came at mutual pal Fern Cotton's wedding last month. Fern is such a sweet girl and obviously a friend of both of ours, so I knew he was going to be there, says Craig, now 34, then 34. When I walked in, there was a little bit of tension in the room, so I went straight over and could see Lee was looking nervous about what I was going to say. But I gave him a huge hug and I said, I don't know how it's all escalated to this, but I just want to say that there are no hard feelings and everything is cool. He was like, oh, thank you, man, because I really thought you had a problem. All he did at the time of Bow Selector was pick up on something that any good comedian would do. If anything, it's a form of flattery. Striking a very different tone now, seven years after this interview and 20 years after the alleged bullying, now that he's got an album and a book to plug in 2022, but hey. And here's where it gets really interesting. Craig says he never actually was bothered by the parody and it was his PR team at the time who insisted he play Hurt. Which was never very convincing because his public declarations of fury and hurt came after he'd invited the comic on stage with him to sing the garish hit that gave Lee show the name, Rewind, the crowd say Bow Selector. Craig says, if I'm super honest, I was actually always totally cool with it. I remember growing up watching Spitting Image and so then when it was me, David Beckham, Mel B from the Spice Girls, all these massive names being done, it was fine. I was in great company. But my PR was trying to control everything and I was very media trained, very PR savvy and used to just give automated answers. It's almost as though you've learned nothing, you vacuous husk. After first inviting Lee on stage with me at the Royal Albert Hall, I was told to go the opposite way and say I was all hurt and upset by it, saying I wanted to punch someone. I didn't want to punch anyone. It was just people around me trying to amp it all up, fueling the fire. It shows how much I wasn't in control at this time. I was all over the place, taking myself too seriously. But actually, it was all nonsense. Well, well, well. Uh, anyway, here's the funny bit of the interview. <laughs> At this point, things get a little strange. Mid-confession, Craig stares at me and says, when I look into your eyes, I don't see you as a journalist. You're a human being. <laughs> if I reduce you to a means to an end, I reduce you to a piece of wood. You're not a piece of wood. 
So now I'm honest and I won't BS bullshit. I won't BS you. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> I love this journalist. <laughs> Anyway, I'm bored of editing now, so I'm just going to read a few gems from the rest of the article, okay? And uh, I can't be, I'm, not, this, I'm 20 minutes into the video. You've no idea how long it takes to edit a 20 minute video, even this one, which isn't a particularly difficult one. But uh, let's, let's get into this. Uh, yeah, a couple of things here. He says, uh, <laughs> this is a great article, by the way. <laughs> Inspired by one of his favorite books, Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment. He suggests I read it. <laughs> Craig repeatedly lapses into self-helpy streams of consciousness. <laughs> what a douche. The guy's a douche. <laughs> ah, and then he, she goes on to explain a little bit about his, uh, what happened to him, you know, Bo Selector, you know, killed off his reputation in England and he moved over to America and got into fitness and had a ripped six pack, training three hours a day. And he, uh, he says, it went from one extreme to another. Some people become addicted to drugs, alcohol or smoking. For me, was the gym <laughs> yeah some people get um get killed by police brutality for me it was bow selector you know um so you know yeah swings and roundabouts whatever it's all good in the end i had an intolerance test to find out what foods i shouldn't eat i knew exactly what was going on in my body at all times uh, how many calories my abs look great so his, his abs look great so that was good but my face looked gaunt. Mm. I was starting to look older and, uh, and, and didn't look well. Uh, except for his ripped abs, of course, they look great. At one stage, I went to this body pod chamber in Miami. I think we can all relate. I mean, who hasn't, you know, uh, which measures your body fat. And it said that I was 4.7% body fat right? 3.5% um, body fat is the point at which your organs start shutting down, right? So I was very close to being shut down uh, from lack of body fat. I nearly died from going to the gym. I realized that I needed to ease off and now I'm around 10 to 12% body fat. This is all in an interview, right? It's great. Okay. It's interesting. Um, okay. And then she goes on a little bit about his new life as a DJ. This was in 2015, by the way. And then uh, <laughs> she talks about his famous all white Miami apartment where um, black coffee, well, coffee and red wine are banned because they could stain it. Right. And uh, she says, happily, this is not much of an issue. Thanks to the two housekeepers who clean the place from top to bottom <laughs> six days a week. Very relatable. Okay. Uh, following his sellout show in London tomorrow night, Craig is back in October for another gig. One thing is for certain, though, if his gigs are anything like his parties, there will be more women than men. Specifically, a seven to three ratio. <laughs> you think, why is she saying that? What does this mean? Well, yeah, she's she's being serious. Chatting over mineral water in his management's West London offices. He explains, 73, 7 to 3, the 7 to 3 ratio uh, came about because I found that whenever the guy ratio got higher than the girl, it gave off a slightly different energy and girls got intimidated. Yeah, it's a rapey energy. When there's too many men <laughs> drinking alcohol and there's few women. And they all have to fight over the women, you know. Rapey energy. He didn't say any of that. I'm saying that. But, you know, I think we know what he means. So I tried to back it up. These are his words right now. So I tried to back it up. Back what up? What? What are you, what are you talking about? Back it up. Uh, these massive parties I was throwing, right? So I, what, you'll all understand. I tried to back it up. I changed... <laughs> I tried to back it up. He tried to back it up, right? Of course, what he means by back it up is the party ratios. He tried to back them up. I tried to back it up. 
and make it go the other way around. You know, try to make it, try to back up the party ratios and make them go the other way around. I think what he's trying to say is he started inviting more women, right, to his parties. But he says he tried to back it up and make it go the other way around. Yeah? Re rewind. Um, and it works so well. You know, having loads of hot women at a party works really well for Craig David and his friends. There is less chance for a guy to approach a girl and hound her, which is good. You know, the rapey energy went down. Okay? Um, he has to get through, a, you know, he, he has to get through a group of girls first. He has to Fight all the friends off first, you know, they've got the rape alarms, pulling the pins out their rape alarms and, and, you know, pepper spraying them and everything. And, you know, if he's really, you know, he'll get there in the end if he really wants it. But, you know, it's a lot harder when it's a 73 ratio. So that's why he tried to back it up and make it go the other way around, you see, because, um, because that's what he was trying to do. Um... You know, they're spending a fortune on lawyers. This from a man whose lyrics to his smash song, Seven Days, declared that he was taking girls out for drinks on Tuesday and making love by Wednesday. Now, that's not very 2022, is it? <laughs> Bet uh, Lee Francis never said anything like that. Ah... <sighs> 15 years on, Craig is, um, he says he's a changed man. Single through choice, gone are the days when he would wake up beside an anonymous woman every weekend. And these are his words now. About two years ago, I had a shift, I had a shift in consciousness. And now I never objectify a woman. Never. He never objectifies a woman. Imagine now, seven years on, he's basically Buddha. He's just sitting under a tree in Tibet, right? Yeah, saving up all of his coom <laughs> to eventually mummify himself. Um, anyway, I can appreciate your beauty. These are his words. I can appreciate your beauty. He's talking to this very pretty um, female journalist. I can appreciate your beauty, your physique, right? But I realise you're not purely flesh. Right? You're not purely flesh. Depends how he emphasised that, you know. You're not purely flesh. You know, there's more to you than flesh. There's something deeper on a soul level in every single human. You see, this is the kind of nugget of wisdom you get from K K Craig David. It, it, people are not just lumps of flesh, right? You're wrong if you think that. Okay? And um, he says... Um, <laughs> that there was this perception of me as a ladies' man, but it gets to a point when you're uh, when you're going around in circles, you know, you're shagging loads of really hot women. <laughs> he didn't say that; they're my words, but um, I'm translating because you know you might not get it. Um, meeting the same kind of people, hot ladies, yeah, I'm guessing. So so then I eased off. And I backed it up and tried to work it the other way around. No, he didn't say that. I eased off and I pulled the reins in. Oh, he did say something stupid, though. I pulled the reins in. Pulled the reins in. Uh, I pulled my dick out. And um, now I have no interest in waking up beside someone who I have no connection with. Interestingly enough, as I'm scrolling through this, there are Viagra um, adverts. I don't know if that's a coincidence, but <laughs> when you stop judging someone on whether they're super hot, that's when it gets real. God, this guy is like Confucius, isn't he? While he may still come out, and this is the journalist talking, while he, while he may still come out with the odd painfully earnest gem, <laughs> and then in brackets, it, I've had some beautiful coincidences and synchronicities in my life, for example. <laughs> Who talks like that? Eckhart Tolle. Craig is actually extremely likable. Yes, he has a ridiculously lavish lifestyle, but he works for it. 
Well, there you go, people. That's Craig David in a nutshell. Goodbye, good night.